Coming up, the Tory leadership contest was turned on its head this week when, out of the blue, the maddest electorate in Britain, the parliamentary Tory party, opted to dump the contest front-runner, the only relatively sane option left to them, James Cleverley. That shocking vote leaves the Tories with two rabid right-wingers to choose between for their next leader, either of which is going to be a gift to Labour, and one which they won't have to declare. In this video, I'll be telling you everything you need to know about Jemrick and Badenoch and their history of gaffes, law-breaking and corruption. Stay tuned. So let's start with the Boogies News' second favourite, Robert Jenrick. Honest Bob. Robert Generic, as he used to be known, before discovering his inner fascists during Boris Johnson's leadership. Jemrick first came to my attention during what is now known as the West Ferry Scandal. This was a controversial £1 billion mixed-use building development on the Isle of Dogs in East London, headed up by ex-porn publisher come property developer Richard Desmond. Shortly after attending a charity dinner with Desmond, Jemrick approved the scheme, overruling the local authority Tower Hamlets, as well as London City Hall, the government's top planning inspector and local residents. Official documents show that Jemrick's office put considerable pressure on civil servants to get the approval through before a deadline came in, after which a community infrastructure levy of £45 million would have been due from Desmond to the local authority, Tower Hamlets. Desmond then made a £12,000 contribution to the Conservative Party 14 days after Jemrick had approved the scheme. That would have been a 375,000% return on investment. Tory corruption really is bargain basement stuff for their donors. Tower Hamlet's local authority didn't let this drop though and referred the matter to the Metropolitan Police. Jemrick took fright, backed down and had to quash his own approval decision, conceding that the decision was unlawful due to apparent bias. In other words, yep, I was corrupt and you've got me banged to rights. Honest Bob was often sent out for the daily media round by Boris Johnson as the minister responsible for defending the indefensible. A highlight was during the pandemic when he used the daily government COVID update on peak time national television to effusively thank building construction company Taylor Wimpy for their contribution to the nation during the pandemic. Taylor Wimpy are a major Tory donor. Another example of the brazen corruption that earned the man the nickname Honest Bob. A free, prime-time national TV ad going out to literally millions of viewers. An advertising gift for his chums at Taylor Wimpy in return for donations to the Tory party. But this is not the most egregious example of Jemrick's appetite for corruption. His behaviour in connection with the Towns Fund, part of the Tory levelling up scheme, is even more reprehensible. The £3.6 billion fund was meant to give financial assistance to 100 of the most deprived boroughs in the country. Robert Jemrick's constituency of Newark was 270th on that list, way outside the top 100, but was nevertheless one of the winners of a £25 million grant. Jemrick even admitted that the decision had been made by fellow junior minister Jake Berry. And, hold on to your seat, it later emerged that Jemrick had approved a grant for, wait for it, Jake Berry's constituency of Darwin. Jemrick defended this you-scratch-my-back arrangement as perfectly normal. What would be perfectly normal is for this sort of corruption to end up with the perpetrator being imprisoned. But Boris Johnson protected Jemrick from that fate, allowing him even to retain his seat in Cabinet. That is, until, during lockdown, Jemrick decided, like every other Tory, that Covid rules only applied to the little guys, and he travelled 150 miles from his London property to his Herefordshire home, and then travelled for a further hour or more to visit his parents in Shropshire. Amid mounting criticism, he defended his actions during the lockdown by saying he went to deliver food and medicine to his isolating parents at the other end of the country. But at the next reshuffle, Johnson took the opportunity to rid himself of the liability that was Jemrick. But here we are, four years later, and rather than being behind bars, Jemrick is now second favourite to become the next leader of the Conservative Party. The favourite, as of right now, being Kemi Badenoch, 
or Bad Enoch, or Kemi Kazi, whichever you prefer. Badenoch is the embodiment of the Tory hard right, her words and actions magnifying Tory dysfunction. She's a stark reminder of just how badly the Tories have misjudged what they claim is the will of the people by chasing the Reform Party UK limited vote and abandoning all hope of winning over the overwhelmingly centrist British electorate. Culture warrior Kemi first entered Parliament as recently as 2017 after a stint at the Conservative think tank the Heritage Foundation. And if you've not heard of the Heritage Foundation, they're a far-right American libertarian pressure group. They provide funding and advocate against critical race theory, as well as challenging the international scientific consensus on climate change. Unsurprising, that one, as ExxonMobil are their major donor. The Heritage Foundation also oppose transgender rights and are against funding Ukraine's military efforts to resist the Russian invasion. So Badenoch's ideological bearings were clear from the very outset. She rose from newbie Heritage Foundation plant to being a cabinet minister during a period where the Tories abandoned their moderate supporters and shifted ever more to the hard right. And who better to exemplify that shift than Kemi? As well as widespread reporting in the media of her bullying attitude towards staff and civil servants, her views on social issues are divisive and polarising, marginalising and attacking minority groups and immigrants. Ideal material to fire up the Tory party's daily telegraph reading grassroots membership. Amazing to think that she's currently Shadow Minister for Communities, amongst other things, whilst holding views hostile to the transgender community, the black community, somewhat ironically, and opposing the teaching of critical race theory, whether that be the National Trust providing facts about the slavery-funded history of their properties, or schools teaching about white privilege, which she claims is illegal to teach. Her approach to equality, denying institutional racism, aligns with the Tory right's war on woke, a hostility towards all progressive social movements. Take her views on the British Empire, for example. In leaked WhatsApp messages, Badenoch said, I don't care about colonialism because I know what we were doing before colonialism got there, adding that Europeans came in and just made a different bunch of winners and losers on the African continent. An apologist for colonialism and the most likely next leader of the Tory party, a darling of the Tory right. Her appeals to the Tory membership goes hand in hand with her alienation of the other 99% of the electorate, despite her claims that working at McDonald's as a 16-year-old student made her working class. Her leadership, even in opposition, would mean worsening divisions in our society, further normalising the Farragist othering of minorities. She's never demonstrated an interest in consensus because, since her Heritage Foundation days, her style has been one of unwavering commitment to a Trumpian, American-style, libertarian ideology. Her approach is always one of ideological purity and bugger the consequences for those on the wrong end of social inequality or any other vulnerable group. For example, she's criticised the millennial generation for being too sensitive to inappropriate behaviour and sexual harassment. She's been recorded mocking gay marriage, and she reckons with absolutely no evidence that there's an epidemic of children being told that they're transgender. Even more serious was Badenoch's 2018 admission that a decade earlier she'd hacked into the website of Harriet Harman, who was at the time deputy leader of the Labour Party. That was a criminal offence under the Computer Misuse Act of 1990, and a particularly appalling one, seeing as she was hacking a rival politician's website during an election campaign, which would have resulted in up to two years in prison. She's the 21st century equivalent of Richard Nixon, and only avoided prosecution because of the statute of limitations. The passage of time since the offence meant she couldn't be prosecuted. So just like Jemrick, she is a self-confessed criminal. More recently, Badenoch published a series of tweets in 2021 in which she included screenshots of questions sent to her office by HuffPost journalist Nadine White. Badenoch publicly accused Nadine White, a normal everyday journalist doing a normal everyday job, of creepy and bizarre behaviour. 
Of course, Nadine White then predictably received a torrent of threats and abuse from Badenoch's knuckle-dragging supporters on the far right, forcing White to withdraw from social media while she was simultaneously dealing with the death of her sister from Covid. Nice one, Kemi. Even the right-wing rag The Evening Standard protested that Nadine White was only doing her job. Badenoch was also criticised by the National Union of Journalists and the Council of Europe. Hers is the kind of anti-media behaviour that you usually only hear about in Orbán's Hungary, Erdogan's Turkey, Putin's Russia or Trump's America. Badenoch was very deliberately using an intimidation tactic as a serious and chilling threat to the role of a free press in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the bookie's favourite to be the next leader of the official opposition. So, Jemrik or Badenoch, both self-confessed criminals and either would be a disastrous prime minister. Not that I believe for one second that either of them will even be Tory leader come the next general election. But what do you think? Do you have a preference between these two criminal right-wing nutjobs? And if so, why? Leave a comment below and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.